Hey guys, it's Trisha Carr. I have new exciting things going on with my Mystic Arts Academy. You can now subscribe to receive all of the live monthly content for about a third of the investment of a single class. Included are at least one downloadable guided meditation per month, two live events ranging from classes, channeled messages, group readings, intuitive development guidance, Q&A sessions, and tons of community. You'll also have access to a private Facebook community for fellowship and support, and this space is kept super sacred and high vibrational. Your subscription gives you access to the whole library of classes and live events, which are on a vast array of topics. All events are offered online by Zoom video call, and many are also offered live in person at my studio here in Los Angeles. Subscribing to the Mystic Arts Academy is also a way for you to support the Charmed Life podcast and engage on a deeper level. I'm offering the subscription at a super low rate of $22 a month. Joining now locks in this rate for as long as you're subscribed. Click on the description of this episode or go to my website, trishacarcharm.com, and click on Mystic Arts Academy. I look forward to connecting. Hi, you guys. It's Trisha Carr. Welcome to my channel and my podcast and to a mini episode of Charmed Life. That is my regular podcast that comes out every Sunday at 12 noon Pacific. It's actually live streamed on YouTube and Facebook and on my on my website under my broadcast window page. So if you wanted to watch the video version, that's how you can catch it. Those are the full episodes that come out on Sunday. They come out um, every week and I usually feature an, a guest expert in some area of spirituality, consciousness, healing, anything in that area. And uh, But sometimes I just teach on my own, and I will be doing at least one episode coming up really soon about animal communication and manifestation, how you can actually use your communication, telepathic communication with your animals and with nature. If you don't have animals in your household as your family, then it's a, a technique, a tool, a modality you can use with nature, even the tree in your front yard, or a bird who is, you know, a wild bird, for you to align with your manifestation process. And of course, this is a mini episode. I have been doing these daily, um, my 29 days of lunar phase, and this is the 25th day, 20, the 25th phase. I've been calling each day a phase, and actually the moon moves through a new gate every 10 hours. And so to isolate it into like a mini, mini phase every day makes a lot of sense. And we have these sub phases of the moon, the offering of energy that comes from the different position that the moon has in relationship to the sun and to the earth. And we move with her cycles in this way. And so this is the 25th day of daily charting the lunar cycle. And you can listen to this and gain whatever you are aligned with gaining at any time, whether it is in this lunar phase or whether it is in alignment with this particular global lunar offering, even if it's outside of it, because I know that's how energy works. All right. So with that, let's get into the energy of this day, what the moon is offering now. We are sort of just between the third quarter, which is that half moon, and the waning crescent or the balsamic moon. And it really feels as though the people who are going to either watch or listen to this podcast are going to be listening to it more in the energy of the balsamic moon or the waning crescent. So I'm really going to focus on that. As I record this, we're just like right on that cusp, but more in that waning crescent. So the, the themes of this waning crescent or the balsamic moon, let me talk about what those energies are. The crescent, of course, I'm sure you can, you already know, or you can at least um, deduce from the word crescent is the sliver of the moon, less than 50%, and waning means to get smaller and smaller. So the moon's illumination is diminishing or waning. And so this is the energy that is being offered, the diminishment of the manifestation. Now, this can come across to us as a, a sort of, a, as we've been doing release, but it can also 
sort of feel like a bit of loss. It's not truly lost, though. What's so beautiful as though as is that as the moon diminishes her illumination, it is because she is turning more to her source. And so that is the energy that you are being offered now. You aren't losing anything. You aren't manifesting less. You are actually returning to source to gather your energy, to gather your inspiration just before we head to the new moon again, which is when we actually set our intentions, review and set our intentions. Now, balsamic is another way to refer to this waning crescent time. And balsamic refers to the balsam of a tree or the soothing and the healing time. And so if it is experience, if you're experiencing some kind of loss, maybe it's a loss of something that you are releasing so that you can welcome something in new, or we actually feel loss when we had expectations to manifest something and it didn't manifest the way that we thought that it would. That actually occurs to us like a loss. Another way we may feel loss is just if, if we've shifted intentions, that we tried something out for this lunar cycle and now we're deciding, well, I'm probably going to reset that intention and do something different that's going to feel, maybe it'll feel a little bit like a loss or at least a transition. And so this is the time, this waning crescent or balsamic moon time is when we will just allow ourselves to be soothed, to be healed, and to begin to form an even greater trust with the manifestation process, in particular, trust in the questions that we ask. Now, we're not actually setting intentions yet, but we're getting ready to inset, to set intentions. And so intentions are really, like I say, the questions that we ask. If you think of the uh, the Bible verse, ask and you shall receive, actually, Jesus said that, ask and you shall receive. And it is, there's a two, there's duality actually in that, in that expression, ask, and that's, that's one part, and you shall receive, that's the second part. So we want to be able to have trust in both parts of that dual experience, in the asking and in the receiving. Now, sometimes we may be in our sort of critical mind and we say, but I did ask, and this might be the healing that we that we are receiving right now is about a lost intention or the perceived loss of a non-manifestation. And we say, I did ask and it, I didn't receive it. So that asking you shall receive is a bunch of malarkey. And <laughs> the reason that as we've covered in this series that we don't manifest something is because our deeper soul intention, our deeper essence, knows that we want to refine the frequency before we manifest it, and that there actually isn't a need to manifest something we aren't totally ready for. We do manifest things we're not totally ready for, and they show up as what we would judge as negative experiences. Those negative experiences help us to go back inside and refine the frequency too, just a little bit in a more rough way, <laughs> you know what I mean, like in a, in a less graceful way. It's, there's not truly any way for anything to be ungraceful, but that's what, again, from that 3D perspective, it feels like if we're having to undo some energy, undo a manifestation, it feels like it's kind of an unpacking of energy in a little bit more challenging way. But those patterns that show up for us are there to help us to go deep within because we have been setting that frequency in a certain way so much that we actually manifest what we thought from a critical mind standpoint or from the conscious mind standpoint, from the unhealed perspective that we wanted and in truth our manifestation would show if it, if it were what we would judge as negative, would show us, oh, this is where we want to refine our frequency. And so that comes up in many ways. Sometimes it's an event, a relationship, or a physical manifestation, and, and, you know, an illness or an injury or something. And I, by the way, just had an injury, just blew my back a little bit, went deep inside it, and it actually healed remarkably, astonishingly quickly because I did some self-hypnosis and some deep inner work, welcomed, welcomed in the injury and what it had to tell me, and it really just dissipated. I also did some physical things, obviously, from the outside in works as well. You know, I, I had a back injury, so I did some heat, I did the massage and stretch and all that kind of stuff, and it, it went away really quickly. Anyway, so back to that healing aspect. So we want to be in the asking you shall receive uh, holistically with the ye shall receive when our questions are from our divine desires, 
are deep soul intentions and they are ecological, then we know that they can be received, that they will be received because now we have both parts, ourselves, the asking, the deep divine intentions, the deep divine desires, and the you shall receive, which is it is ecological. Now, this is this is a very simple formula, really. You see, we may think that sometimes the things that we want to manifest are such a big deal and is it aligned? Is it is it in God's will or blah, 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 however you phrase that? Well, you know, we have if your if your um desire and your deep, deep soul desire and really deeply aligned with it, it it will feel like a big deal to you because it is a big deal to you. If it isn't like we can even start from the lowest common denominator. Is it harming anyone? Do you wanna do you want to have this at the diminishment of someone else? Or will you having or doing this harm anyone or take something away from someone? No, it won't. And so that's how you know that it is your deep soul desire as is because it is ecological. So you can start from those lowest common denominators and then you can build upon it and say, and it won't harm anyone. Can it serve others as well? And if you can just feel how your best self, your greatest, the potential of your what most wonderful talents and wisdom and experience and excitement, that which lights you up and, and is an inspiration to you will be an inspiration to others. And so it is profoundly ecological. That's the formula of ask and you shall receive. At this time of this balsamic moon, this waiting crescent, we want to be in the healing and the soothing energy of trusting our divine desires because we're not yet setting the intentions. We want to trust that we can set our intentions and we want to trust that we will ask for the right things. This is how we get all crazy in our heads is I'm asking for something. Is it aligned? Is it in the highest good for everyone? Is it God's will? Again, however you say that using the word God to mean the collective consciousness, you know, the the one energy, the universe. At least that's how I use it. <clears throat> and what we want to do is recognize that we do ask the right questions. We want to be in that deep experience of it, that celebration, that blissful experience. And so I'm going to walk us through a little exercise. It's a little meditative exercise. You can do this if you're listening in your car, just stay very present and obviously keep watching the road, but you could still have the subconscious mind open, the heart open so you can receive the energies and have the um, you know, intention to receive what is beneficial to you. I've done this a few times on my podcast, on my channel, where I do an acrostics. And an acrostics, you know, is where it's like, you take a word and then each letter of the word, you use another word to help align your states of being to it. So I've done one that for Gaia, if you haven't caught this on my channel, and like used Gaia, G-I-A-I. -I. Did I spell that right? G-A-I-A. -I, -A. <laughs> I spelled it wrong. I put too many. <laughs> I flipped it. Anyway, so for example, by doing an acrostics with Gaia, the state of being as, that is associated with the letter G is gratitude. And so we get deep into that energy for a moment. It's control meditation. It is a kind of self-talk or self-hypnosis to activate these frequencies inside your subconscious mind and welcoming in your conscious mind. So we use the conscious mind, welcome in the subconscious mind, use the whole mind and activate the frequency. That's what we're going to do now. So if you are in a place where you can close your eyes, great, but you don't have to. Again, if you're driving, a lot of people listen to podcasts while they're driving. And thank you. Thanks for inviting me into your car <laughs> or your home or your walk, however you are listening or watching. And let's just, even if you are driving, if you cannot close your eyes, just begin to allow the feeling of relaxation. Just welcome it in. You don't have to try. You don't have to effort. Just welcome it in. And you could even say out loud or in your mind, I welcome relaxation. I welcome, I welcome calm. I welcome the frequency of calm relaxation. And take a nice, deep cleansing breath. And one more time, welcoming in the calm relaxation, the openness of the heart and the subconscious mind with this breath. And with these deep breaths, we are also synchronizing, synchronizing to the field, synchronizing intention, divine intention. And this acrostics that will walk us through states of being will be to the word intent. 
We are not at the place of setting intentions quite yet, but we are healing and soothing ourselves with the process of setting intentions, with the process of asking the universe. Asking the universe, our part of it, the first step of asking you shall receive. Trusting, trusting deeply, whether it is again in the sense of needing healing or soothing or whether it is just trusting and going deeper into the experience of trusting that you ask the right, the right questions. And so we will begin now moving into the first state of being inner essence inner essence the I and our intent process is inner essence and at this time deeply welcome communion with your inner essence the inner essence is sometimes felt as a fertile void. At other times, it feels very active, like electric, excited, and comfortably blissful energy. Allow these aspects of the inner essence, your purity, your light, where you go to begin your asking. This is your native land, your inner essence. Find your inner essence at this time. I find my inner essence. And now be with your inner essence at this time. I am with my inner essence. And now, be your inner essence. I am my inner essence. Inner essence. Moving to our next state of being. Calling in the frequency and activating now. now, the eternal now, being very present at this moment, calling in the frequency of I am now. Now is where creation happens. Now is where creator is. Now is the energy of God and your God essence. Bathe yourself in the frequency of now, the eternal, infinite now. And moving into the next state of being, calling in the frequency of trust, trust. At this moment, allow your awareness to fall upon the fact that you do trust. The empirical evidence of your trusting nature is that you are. You have allowed yourself to set intentions, to ask questions, and you have allowed yourself to receive the answers and the manifestation of these intentions and these questions. You're asking and you're receiving is proof that you indeed trust. There is no work to do 
to trust. Simply allow your frequency to be aligned with the fact that you trust. I trust my being. I trust my soul. I trust the divine. I trust the divine in me, and I trust the divine of the universe. Trust. And moving into our next state of being. Expand. Allow your energy to align with expansion. And at this time, I allow expansion. Recognizing that expansion is inevitable. And so I surrender and allow myself to expand. It is natural for energy to expand. And in the process of creation, expansion happens. And so call now the frequency of expansion. I expand. And the next state of being we will move into is new. In this moment, I am brand new. Every single now is new. And being in full allowance with your excitement of that which is new. I allow myself to be excited about the newness of every moment. I allow myself to have unconditional positive expectation of that which is new. How fun it is to welcome in that which is new. Activating the frequency of new. And in this moment, I am brand new. And our next state of being stands for two T's, timing and transcendence. With timing, we allow ourselves to align with perfect timing, perfect synchronization, as it is our birthright as a natural and spiritual being. In only one energy, there is only one timing. And so we know that perfect, perfect timing, perfect synchronization is inevitable. And affirming now that I am in perfect timing. And with this calling in of perfect timing, this birthright of perfect synchronization, you transcend. You transcend time, the creation of time. For when you recognize that you are in perfect timing, you become the one who creates time. And so you transcend time and use timing as a tool. And so transcendence, I transcend. I am transcendent. calling in the frequencies of perfect timing 
and transcendence. All right, well, with that, I will leave you to the rest of this day, this phase that we are in, this soothing balsamic phase, waning crescent. And I will check in again with you tomorrow for the next day, the next phase of this 29 days of lunar phase. Thanks for tuning in. I love you, whoever you are. Hey everyone, it's Trisha Carr. I'm really excited because it is the time of the year for me to offer my Animal Communication Comprehensive Program live online. Whether you are interested in the profession or if you would like to connect more deeply with your own animal family members, having an understanding of this form of telepathy will enhance your life and all of your other intuitive gifts. About once per year, I offer this program live and that time is now. It is starting in December of 2019 and this particular live program has some bonus time added in. So the way this program works is it is delivered live online and we also have a private study group of a beautiful community of like-hearted animal and nature lovers. Go ahead and check it out. The link is in the description and I hope to see you there. Thank you so much for your love of animals, for your love of our planet, and for shining your light on our beautiful world.